good evening. If, uh, if we could please ask everyone to take your seats. Uh, we are uh, going to begin tonight's program. So we ask that everyone please be seated. Good evening. <laughs> I'm, I'm Bob Beagle. I'm the Vice President for Advancement here at the University of Rhode Island. And it's my great pleasure to welcome all of you to our fourth annual Distinguished Awards Program. And I'm very happy to say that in just four short years, this program has become one of the University of Rhode Island's signature events. It is also my pleasure to introduce my colleague, Dr. Donald Hayes, the Provost and Vice President for Academic Affairs, who will be assisting with a lot of tonight's program. Let's begin the celebration, and let's begin the celebration by having our formal procession of dignitaries. And who could be more important to the Rhode Island community to lead off this procession, and who is more of a celebrity and more of a dignitary than our very own Rhodey the Ram? No event, no event could ever occur without Rhodey the Ram. And now we'll begin introducing our academic award winners. Rhodey, how you doing, fellas? <laughs> and now we'll begin by introducing our academic deans and our academic award winners. And we'll start with the Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences, Winifred Brunell. <laughs> Recipients of the Dean's Award in the College of Arts and Sciences, Philip Kidd, Class of 1981. <laughs> Carol J. Makovich, Class of 1975. <laughs> Anthony E. Parati, Class of 1962. Good evening, everyone. I'm very pleased to introduce the Dean of the College of Business, Mark Higgins. And the recipients from the College of Business, Margot L. Cook from the class of 1986. And, and David B. Lee, Jr. from the class of 1959.
and Michael M. Morrow from the class of 1977. From the Alan Sean Feinstein College of Continuing Education, I'm very pleased to introduce Vice Provost John McRae. And the recipients from the College of Continuing Education, John A. Flaherty from the class of 1987. Barbara A. Roberts from the class of 1983. And Mary Ann Shalcross Smith from the class of 1985. Please welcome from the College of Environmental and Life Sciences, Dean Nancy Faye Jensen. With award recipients, Wayne King Durfee, Class of 1950. And, and Peggy Boyd Sharp, friend of the college and of the university. From the College of Engineering, let's greet Dean Raymond Wright. With recipients Krishnan K. Bala, Krishnan was from the class of 1970, Barry Gertz, class of 1976. Anthony Zuna, class of 1974. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome from the Graduate School of Oceanography, Dean David Farmer. And recipients from the Graduate School of Oceanography, Christopher Langdon, PhD from 1988. Jerry L. Miller, MS from 1983. And Michael P. Sissenwine, PhD from 1975. I am pleased to introduce from the College of Human Sciences and Services, Dean, Dean Lynn McKinney. And recipients from the College of Human Sciences and Services, Marie Campopiano Di Basio from 1961. <laughs> Michael A. Nula from the class of 1996. <laughs> and Linda 
Diamario Rossi from the class of 1968. From the College of Nursing, Dean Dale Joseph. <laughs> College of Nursing recipients, Holly Powell Kennedy, class of 1999. Elaine Doherty Sullivan, class of 1975. <laughs> Deborah K. Zastocki, class of 1974. From the College of Pharmacy, De De Dean Ronald Jordan, who brought his own cheering section. With recipients Scott A. Campbell, class of 1977. J. DeJardins, class of 1972. Th th this is getting more and more like the Academy Awards all the time here. <laughs> Eleanor Ann, sorry, Eleanor M. Perfecto, class of 1980. And now, ladies and gentlemen, next in our procession, please welcome the 2009 President's Distinguished Achievement Award winners. First, Patricia Miller Anton from the class of 1979. James V. Diller from the class of 1957. Richard A. Kerr from the class of 1977. And Edward M. Rudnick from the class of 78, 82, and 83. At this time, I would like to invite all of you to please stand. And if you have a glass, also raise your glass as you stand. And it gives me great pleasure to introduce the newest member of our URI community, and also very distinguished couple, President David Dooley and Reverend Lynn Baker Dooley. And now, I, and now I would like you, I would like all of you to join me in toasting President Dooley and Lynn Baker Dooley. And I want to say on behalf of the University of Rhode Island and the community at large, we are absolutely delighted to have them here. And we toast them to a very long 
and highly successful presidency. Welcome, David and Lynn Dooley. Here, here. And I'd also like you to join me in a toast to all of our award winners tonight as we celebrate and toast their distinguished and extraordinary accomplishments. Cheers. And the crowd is already getting rowdy. <laughs> okay, you may be seated. <laughs> At this time, at this time, I would like to publicly thank our sponsors of tonight's event. We have I feel like uh, I feel like when Jerry and I have the grandchildren at home, you know, you can't, can't really manage them. Anyway, I would like to publicly uh, thank our sponsors for tonight's event. We have over 400 people here, which we think is an extraordinary accomplishment in today's marketplace. We particularly want to thank the University of Rhode Island Alumni Association, who has been the primary sponsor of the Distinguished Achievement Awards throughout its four-year history. And I would like to acknowledge the association by acknowledging the current president, Don Sullivan. Our other sponsors are listed in your program, and they will be appearing on the screen and uh, again, a hearty thanks to everybody who made the evening possible. At this time, uh, we will be serving salad in the first course, so we will take a short break in the program. Please enjoy the evening dinner. And just so you know, uh, it's a fairly long program, so in order to keep things moving along, we will actually be doing a lot of the award presentations uh, while you are enjoying your, your meal and your dessert. See you in a little bit. It, it cost me a lot of money to pay those people to tap the glasses and my, my, uh, my role tonight is to keep interrupting you while you're having a good time. But uh, I did tell you that we're going to keep moving the program along uh, as, you, as you eat. So at this, at this point, I'd like to uh, again invite Provost Don DeHayes to come up. And uh, Don is going to be responsible for facilitating the uh, presentations of our Dean's Award recipients. And uh, this is a very impressive group of alumni and friends. So uh, Don DeHayes, it's all yours. Please enjoy your dinner, everyone. And thank you so much for joining us this evening as we celebrate the achievements of several distinguished alumni of the University of Rhode Island. I would like to extend a warm welcome to the honorees and also to their families and friends for joining in this celebration this evening. Each of these recipients are highly accomplished citizens who have made significant contributions at every level of society. Yet these graduates, yes, these graduates of our very special Campus with a Conscience have found ways to make a meaningful life while at the same time making a very good living. We thank you for your contributions. We are very proud of each of you. Alumni of this great university have made truly lasting impacts 
that have enhanced the quality of life of so many. Indeed, their extraordinary work and efforts have also elevated the status and visibility of our university. We are grateful to you for both sets of these valued contributions. Several months ago, Smart Money Magazine, which is published by the Wall Street Journal, ranked the University of Rhode Island 15th in the nation and best in New England in the category of best return on investment. A, f a few other less well-known Northeastern institutions, such as Harvard, Princeton, Dartmouth, were further down on the list. I hope you're all very proud of that. We are. So we take this opportunity tonight to honor and thank an especially distinguished and gifted group of our alums for their extraordinary contributions. Because of you and others, we now proudly can proclaim URI has the best ROI. <laughs> to, assist me, to assist me this evening in presenting the awards, I'm pleased to introduce three of our current students. David Bedard, President of the Student Senate. Welcome, David. Bobby Randall, President of the Student Alumni Association. Bobby, welcome. And V.D. Shah, Vice President of the Student Senate. Welcome, V.D. At this time, I'd also like to thank all of our students who are here tonight for their participation including students from our music department's choral group, The Lively Experiment, who are led by Associate Professor Mark Conley. The Lively Experiment will be performing a cappella style throughout the evening. Welcome, students. And now we're ready to begin. We have a number of wonderful award recipients to introduce to you during the course of the evening, and we'll do this in a little bit of spurts, so please enjoy your dinner while we're going through this. We ask that you hold your applause until each de uh, dean introduces their recipients. I would now like to introduce Dean Winnie Brownell from the College of Arts and Sciences to present her Dean's List Awards. Thank you, Provost de Hayes. I am honored to introduce Philip Kidd. Please join me at the lectern, Phil. <laughs> Phil Kidd graduated in 1981 with a degree in art studio and has applied his artistic and leadership talents throughout his life. As a phenomenal URI basketball star, Phil found himself in the paint during his successful career as captain of one of URI's greatest teams. Recently, he was inducted into the URI Athletic Hall of Fame. As assistant, as assistant director of administrative services and a member of the Rhode Island Department of Transportation executive team, he helped found the multi-million dollar Transportation Center of Excellence at URI and ensured the availability of over $7 million in additional grants for training and research. Phil established partnerships with the Federal Highway Administration, National Highway Institute, and more. Phil, an engaged alum, has created programs to recruit minority students and faculty served as president of the URI Alumni Association, the first African-American and the first athlete to hold that position, and was a past board member of the Ram Athletic Association and the Engineering Advisory Council. He serves as trustee of the URI Foundation and of Merriam Hospital, as a member of the Business Advisory Council, and on many boards. Congratulations, Phil, on your Dean's List Award.
Carol Makovich, please join me by the lectern. If your company has good news or bad news, you need to call Carol Makovich. This 1975 Arts and Sciences Journalism alumna has had an outstanding career as a business communications professional. After writing for URI's student paper, The Good Five Cent Cigar, Carol worked as a reporter and then moved into the corporate world. Adept at promoting good news as well as handling communication in a crisis, Carol became the media point person for Fortune 500 companies as Vice President of Worldwide Communications for RJR Nabisco and Vice President for Communications for IBM and VP for the Lenovo Group. She led successful campaigns in branding and product publicity while managing multi-million dollar global budgets and in-house and agency teams. Carol's now a principal of Owen Blicksilver Public Relations Inc., a top 10 PR firm focusing on supporting clients and private equity. Carol served on nonprofit boards, including five years as chair of an arts organization and 10 years as director of a New York er organization serving the homeless. We are delighted to announce that Carol has just agreed to become a founding member of the board of the Harrington School of Communication at URI. Congratulations, Carol, on your Dean's List Award. Anthony Parati, please join me at the lectern. Tony Parati is a 1962 biology and chemistry graduate who serves as president of Rhode Island Analytical Laboratories, specializing in the analysis of water, wastewater, soil, air, and other materials. For over 30 years, Tony has ensured that Rhode Island Analytical has maintained a high degree of integrity and meticulous professionalism in their testing while working for a variety of industries and public organizations. URI recruited Tony to conduct important environmental testing of the Chafee Social Science Center. Thanks to his professional contributions and URI's remediation efforts, Chafee is now one of the safest buildings in the world. As a longtime member of the College of Arts and Sciences Advisory Council, Tony's given his time, talents, and more. In addition to donating air monitoring equipment to the URI Center for Pollution Prevention to use in teaching and research, Tony sponsored numerous arts performances at URI and established the Anthony Parati Music and Theater Performance Endowment that supports public performances by URI students. As a man of science who supports the arts, Tony embodies the exceptional qualities of a College of Arts and Sciences graduate. Congratulations, Tony, on your Dean's List Award. Thank you, Dean Brownell. I'm now pleased to invite to the podium Dean Mark Higgins from the College of Business Administration to present that college's Dean's List Awards. Margo Cook, please join me at the podium. When asked why she made one of the largest donations for the renovation of Ballantyne Hall by a woman, Margot Cook answered, because you asked me. And we at the college have been asking Margot since for her help and expertise. Margot was a valued member of the college's advisory council and just recently was appointed to the executive committee of the URI Foundation Board. She truly exemplifies the adage of the three T's. She is giving of her time, her talent, and her treasure to the university, and in particular, the College of Business. Her experience at URI admittedly has shaped her life, so much so she has planted roots here with the purchase of a second home in Westerly. Over the years, Margo has made a concerted effort to get back to campus for homecoming and the winter gala event. Ask her about her successful auction bid at the Winter Gala to have dinner with then Mayor Buddy Cianci. She'll tell you, I think Buddy is still recovering from the questions I asked him. 
celebrating with her is her partner Renee, as well as the longtime friends she met freshman year at Tucker Hall. Margo, it is my pleasure to honor you with the Dean's List Award and to induct you into the College of Business Hall of Fame. David Lee, please join me by the podium. David attended URI with the help of scholarships from Sears Roebuck and the, and the Hood Milk Company. The latter scholarship required David to major in an area of agriculture. He chose Ag Econ so he could take more courses in business because that's where his heart and passion lie. Taking all those classes in business has paid off. David has had a remarkably successful career in the insurance industry. He has built his company, Brokerage Service Marketing Group, into a premier organization annually recognized by the Providence Business News as one of the best places to work in Rhode Island. David has served in numerous leadership posts in the insurance field at both the state and national levels. With him this evening to celebrate this award is his wife of 35 years, Pat, their children, Janine, Debbie, David, and Jason. You will not find a person more devoted to his family, his employees, and to his friends. He possesses a really big heart and tremendous sense of humor, and his recent dancing lessons has him contemplating auditioning for Dancing with the Stars. The college is grateful to David and Pat for their generous support. David. It's my pleasure to honor you with the Dean's List Award and to induct you into the College of Business Hall of Fame. Mike Morrow, please join me by the podium. I had the pleasure of meeting Mike 13 or 14 years ago when he graciously agreed to serve on the Accounting Advisory Board. I am also pleased that he has agreed to now serve on the College of Business Advisory Council. Mike has been a tremendous friend of the college, always advocating for our accounting students by helping them secure internships and jobs. As a member of PricewaterhouseCoopers Global Board of Directors, Mike has been at the forefront of the discussions concerning the impl implementation of international accounting standards. He has truly been thinking big. His bio in tonight's program provides only a snapshot of his and Carol's involvement with different agencies that support disadvantaged children, inner city youth, and early childhood development, including URI's own Child Development Center. Mike enjoys hiking the Appalachian Trail as well as spending time in the summer on Nantucket. He and his wife, Carol, just celebrated their 20th anniversary last weekend, and they are here tonight from Atlanta, Georgia, with their daughter, Mackenzie, and son, Griffin. We in the college are grateful to Carol and Mike for their generous support over the years. Mike, it is my pleasure to honor you with the Dean's List Award and to induct you into the College of Business Hall of Fame. Thank you, Mark. From the Alan Sean Feinstein College of Continuing Education, I'm pleased to invite Vice Provost John McCray to present his awards. Thank you, Mr. Provost. Could I call forth John Flaherty, please? Class of 1987. When asked about his experience in continuing education on the University of Rhode Island's Providence campus, John states that he had an overwhelming sense that this was an institution dedicated to the success of its students, and the students themselves were there because they really wanted to be. He goes on to state that the sense of family at the Providence campus is due to a culture where everyone, students, faculty, and staff are invested in each other's and their success. Shirley John has taken that same philosophy with him. After earning his degree, John displayed his investment in others through his work as Director of Research and Communications at Grow Smart Rhode Island, and his commitment to this state, his community, and the university by serving and chairing several 
uh, committees of both. It is my pleasure to honor uh, John this evening and to give him this award. May I call Barbara Ann Roberts and Eric. <laughs> Always upbeat and, upbeat and fun, boundless wit and imagine, uh, unimaginable energy, this tremendous achievement has been made by Barbara, who has imprinted herself not only on the state and the state of Massachusetts, but also on the University of Rhode Island. It is one of the reasons why the university is now considered to be a university without barriers. This is the way people recall Barbara. Barbara served as the director of the University of Rhode Island Disability Services and later left us to become the leader of the disability office at MIT. Overcoming her own challenges, Barbara set her goal on making a difference in life. As a recognized expert by state and national disability professionals, and in the lives of those who are differently abled. She achieved her goals and many uh, other types of outcomes and is now enjoying herself in retirement. Today we honor Barbara for her achievement not only to the university but also to her community. Call forth Mary Ann Shell Carras Smith, class of 1985. Mary Ann loves children, and not only her own three children and three grandchildren, but all children. She tells us that she knew this when she took the leap as a, an adult student to return to the university. While juggling family, work, and education, her experience at the College of Continuing Education on the Feinstein Providence campus paved the way for her to eventually earn her doctorate in education and pursue her life love of providing a broad range of child care services. In the child, child care industry, she is known affectionately as Dr. Child Care. Statewide, she is known as Representative Smith, serving as state representative for the Lincoln and Pawtucket District. Marianne is another alumni of whom we are extremely proud to honor today. Thank you, John, and congratulations to all of these Dean's List recipients. We're going to take a short break, allow you to continue enjoying your dinner and enjoying the talent of the lively experiment who will be singing, Gonna Build a Mountain. Be back in a little bit. Gonna build a mountain, yeah.
We're proud to announce the next group of Dean's List recipients. I need, I need someone to bang on a glass for me. I need everyone to bang on a glass for me. Thank you very much. I'd like to invite Dean Lynn McKinney of the College of Human Sciences and Services to come up and present his awards. Marie C. DiBiazio, please join me by the podium. <clears throat> Marie DiBiazio has had a lifelong commitment to strengthening K through 16 education in Rhode Island. She holds a master's degree in ed from URI and a doctor of education from Boston University. She has been a classroom teacher and education specialist for the Rhode Island Department of Education the Director of English Language Arts for the Bristol Public Schools, the Dean and Professor of Education at Roger Williams University, and she is now a partner in BES Educators, consulting firm providing services to schools in Rhode Island and Massachusetts. She is deeply involved in her community, having served on the Board of Directors of the Audubon Society of Rhode Island and been given a special volunteer recognition award by the Genesis Center. Her service to URI has been outstanding. In addition to having been a faculty member with us, she has been a researcher, she has chaired the Alumni Association Fund Drive, and served as the president of the URI Alumni Association. Congratulations and thank you, Marie, for the service you have provided to the University in Rhode Island. Michael Nula, please join me by the podium. <clears throat> Michael Nula earned his BA in biology and his master's in physical therapy from URI and is now working on a doctorate in physical therapy from Temple University. Mike is a board certified physical therapist and the sole proprietor of Elite Physical Therapy Inc., a highly successful phys physical therapy practice that he began seven years ago and has now expanded to three locations, all in Rhode Island. Before starting Elite PT, Mike worked as a physical therapist for Health South Sports Medicine and Rehabilitation. He's also been a science and math teacher, and he has coached sports at St. Raphael Academy and Portsmouth Abbey School. He is certified in cardiopulmonary resuscitation and is fluent in Spanish. He has remained close to our physical therapy program in many ways. He particularly enjoys meeting with our students and in guest lecturing in our courses. Congratulations, Mike, on your Dean's List Award. <laughs> Linda DeMario Rossi, please join me. Linda DeMario Rossi has been educated at the best of institutions, beginning with URI, with her Bachelor of Science degree in Child Development. That degree has been foundational in her work that characterizes her career. I might note that she has an MA in Social Work Administration from Boston University and has completed executive management programs at the Wharton School at the University of Pennsylvania and the John F. Kennedy School of Government at Harvard University. Throughout her career, Linda Rossi has served in key leadership roles in public child welfare, juvenile justice, and children's mental health. She has been, and I think this is extraordinary, a cabinet level administrator for five different governors in the states of Maryland, Texas, Rhode Island, and Connecticut. She is currently a marketing and government relations executive with the Public Consulting Group in Boston. Her accomplishments are legion. It would take way too long to list them all. To name just a couple, she has generated more than $300 million recently in new federal revenues for the Texas Department of Health and Human Services, and she has driven efforts to improve child welfare practice in Maryland and for the Department of Mental Health in Washington, D.C. 
congratulations, Linda, for your outstanding achievement. Thank you, Lynn. And now, from the College of Nursing, I'm pleased to invite Associate Dean Lori Lozon Clabo to present her awards. I'm pleased to be joined by Dr. Holly Powell Kennedy. Dr. Kennedy has a long history as a faculty member in the College of Nursing. During her time with us, she spent a significant amount of her teaching career teaching students about the wonders of birth and the power of midwifery care. In 1999, she earned her PhD in nursing from the University of Rhode Island, while also directing the college's successful midwifery program. Shortly after, the University of California at San Francisco lured her to California, where her career soared. She is a highly respected scholar and researcher who is known throughout the world for her work in midwifery care. In July of this year, she was appointed the Helen Varney Professor of Midwifery at Yale University. This is the first endowed midwifery chair in a university setting. Holly, it is my pleasure to honor you with the Dean's Award. Sullivan. There are some students that faculty recognize as a star early in their careers. Elaine Sullivan is this type of student. Earning both her bachelor's and master's degrees in the College of Nursing at the University of Rhode Island, Elaine consistently demonstrates an eagerness to learn and competency well beyond the norm. She is an expert in the care of patients who have diabetes, using her broad knowledge base in her role as the Associate Clinical Director at the Jocelyn Diabetes Center. She is responsible for operations, clinical, and educational programs across both domestic and international affiliates. She's well published in the area of diabetes and diabetes management and is the recipient of numerous nursing awards. Elaine, it is my pleasure to honor you with the Dean's Award. Thank you. Deborah Zastocki. Dr. Zastocki graduated with the highest distinction from the College of Nursing at the University of Rhode Island. From there, she went on to earn master's degrees in both education and nursing from Columbia, and in 2009, earned a doctorate in nursing practice from the University of Medicine and Dentistry in New Jersey. She is the president and CEO of Chilton Memorial Hospital which is analogous to being the president of a major company. She successfully turned around 5% losses to 2% gains, and she's overseen major renovation projects. In addition, her hospital has received several coveted awards for quality outcomes for heart attacks, stroke, rapid response teams, and pressure ulcers. The recipient of numerous awards throughout her career the most recent being the 2009 Garden State Magazine's Woman of the Year for Healthcare and a Gets It Award. Deborah, it is my honor to present you with the Dean's Award. Thank you, Lori. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ron Jordan. Dean of the College of Pharmacy on stage to make his college's presentations. Scott Campbell, College of Pharmacy Class of 1977. It's, it's nice to lead the rock star program at the university, but we do have a script and a time schedule, so hold your applause till we're done. Scott is owner of the Ocean Pharmacy in Charleston, Rhode Island. He is both an alumni, as both an alumni and professional, he always goes above and beyond to help the college, 
our university and the patients he serves. In addition to serving as a preceptor and mentor to our pharmacy students, he is also an instructor in the College of Pharmacy's entrepreneurial course where he inspires students and lets them know that they too can be successful business owners. Whether it's serving on the college's 50th anniversary committee, working the College of Pharmacy homecoming tent, or purchasing a new flat screen TV for student announcements in the lobby of Fogarty Hall, he's always there for our college. When it comes to serving his patients, Scott has the same commitment and dedication. He has a certification as a diabetes educator and as an immunizing pharmacist here in Rhode Island. Scott continues to serve on the Board of Trustees for the URI Foundation and sits on a number of local boards that include the Arcadia branch of the YMCA. As a former captain of the URI baseball team, Scott continues to provide distinct leadership to his patients, students, colleagues, and community. Scott is a major benefactor of the university and continues to give both to the College of Pharmacy and Athletics. Scott, you personify our tradition of excellence in professional achievement, leadership, and community service, thereby bringing distinction to yourself and the University of Rhode Island College of Pharmacy. And we are proud to present you with the 2009 Dean's List Distinguished Achievement Award. Thank you for thinking big. <laughs> Paul Desjardins. Class of 1972 from Maplewood, New Jersey. Dr. Paul Desjardins is a senior vice president of global clinical and medical affairs for Wyeth Consumer Healthcare based in Madison, New Jersey. He leads a multidisciplinary group of 40 physicians, dentists, pharmacists, and clinical research scientists who develop new over-the-counter analgesics, multivitamins, cough and cold and personal care products. Prior to entering the private sector, Dr. Desjardins enjoyed an extensive academic career at the University of Medicine and Dentistry in New Jersey, where he served as an academic clinical pharmacologist in oral biology and oral surgery from 1981 to 1988, and as associate dean for academic affairs from 1992 to 1998. Dr. Desjardins earned his Doctor of Medical Dentistry from Tufts University School of Dental Medicine and received his PhD in Pharmacology from Georgetown University. He's considered one of the world's experts in naturally occurring acute pain models in humans and has served as a principal investigator coordinating more than 110 controlled clinical trials. He's published 150 papers and abstracts and book chapters on human pain and analgesics. Dr. Jardins is also a benefactor of the College of Pharmacy supporting our current building campaign. Dr. Desjardins, you personify our tradition of excellence and professional achievement, leadership and community service, thereby bringing distinction to yourself and to the University of Rhode Island College of Pharmacy. And we're proud to present you with the 2009 Dean's List Distinguished Achievement Award. Thank you for thinking big. <laughs> Eleanor Perfetto, Pharmacy Class of 80, Master of Science Class of 1988. Dr. Perfetto earned her doctorate at the University of North Carolina School of Public Health. She is currently Senior Director of Reimbursement and Regulatory Affairs at Pfizer Incorporated and has been employed there since 2006. In this position, Dr. Perfetto monitors prescription drug and health care coverage and reimbursement issues. Prior to joining Pfizer, Dr. Perfetto provided research consulting services in health outcomes, pharmacoeconomics, along with safety and risk management. Most recently, she was Senior Director, Epidemiology and Biostatistics, providing clinical research and regulatory consulting services with the Weinberg Group in Washington, D.C. Dr. Perfetto has also had a distinguished public sector career. She served in the U.S. Public Health Service as a senior pharmacoepidemiologist for what is now known as the Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality. 
She began her career as a pharmacist serving for six years in the Indian Health Service in South Dakota and in Oklahoma. Dr. Perfetto served for six years on the Board of Directors of the Drug Information Association, DIA, and is also a DIA past president, 2003 and 2004. She serves as a member of the National Pharmacy Quality Alliance. As a caregiver for her spouse who sp suffers from dementia, Dr. Perfetto is active on behalf of patients with head trauma-related dementias and their care. In May of 2007, she was awarded the Advoca Advocacy Leadership Award by the New York City Chapter of the Alzheimer's Association. She also serves on the Board of Directors of the Sports Legacy Institute, a not-for-profit organization dedicated to research and education on sports-related brain injury. Dr. Perfetto is a college benefactor. She recently established the Eleanor M. Perfetto Endowment, which will be used to support graduate education. Dr. Perfetto, you personify our tradition of excellence in professional achievement, leadership, and community service, thereby bringing distinction to yourself and to the University of Rhode Island College of Pharmacy. And we are proud to present you with the 2009 Dean's List Distinguished Award. Thank you for thinking big. Thank you, Ron, and congratulations again to all of these recipients. Once again, we'll take a short break. Please enjoy the talent of the lively experiment singing Scarborough Fair.
Let me interrupt your reading once again. Thank you for your attention and your patience as we honor our distinguished alums. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to continue our Dean's List Award winners, and I'm very pleased to invite Nancy Faye Jensen, Dean of the College of Environment and Life Sciences, to the podium to present the awards from her college. Thank you. Dr. Durfee, would you please join me at the podium? Dr. Durfee, okay. He's gonna stand right next to me. That's great. Dr. Wayne King Durfee is a professor emeritus in the Department of Fisheries, Animal, and Veterinary Sciences in the College of the Environment and Life Sciences. After earning his doctorate at Rutgers, Wayne taught poultry science at URI for 26 years, becoming known far and wide for his work with the Rhode Island Red, our state bird. Wayne's research on and commitment to the Rhode Island Red has had a significant impact on the state bird's rebounding population. In 2002, the breed was placed on the Livestock Conservancy's watch list and has since been promoted to recovery status thanks to Wayne's efforts to create a heritage flock, which he said is meant to make the red more visible to the public and to establish an unbroken line of pedigree birds. Over the years, Wayne and his wife Bernice, who is a graduate of Botany, uh, 1949, um, have uh, worked to establish uh, scholarships for URI through their endowments and support for numerous other campus activities. Wayne continues to be an active member of the Alumni Association Executive Board. Wayne's commitment to education extends beyond his involvement at URI. He is a community volunteer with the South County Museum, a member of the Hope Masonic, Masonic Lodge No. 25, and he and Bernice are lead organizers and tour guides for the South Ferry Walking Tour. For his unwavering commitment to education and community, we are proud to present Wayne King Durfee with this year's Sells Dean's List Award. Congratulations, Wayne, for your exceptional achievements. Mrs. Sharp, would you join me at the podium? Thank you. There may be no greater force of nature in Rhode Island than that of Peggy Boyd Sharp. Peggy is a true champion of environmentalism in Rhode Island, and her influence is widespread throughout the state. As Peggy can tell you, autumn is the time to walk the trails at L Pond in Hopkinton, or Tillinghast Pond in West Greenwich. Both are part of Rhode Island's incredible portfolio of protected landscapes that Peggy has been instrumental in saving. As one of the founders of the Nature Conservancy in Rhode Island, Peggy helped direct the Conservancy's first major project, the L Pond Reserve. Two years ago, the Conservancy took on its largest project at Tillinghast Pond, protecting over 2,000 acres. It is here that you will see the Sharp Family Reserve dedicated to honor the work of Peggy, her husband, and her children. Peggy knows that conservation is not just about protection, but also stewardship. Last year, she helped create the Rhode Island Conservation Stewardship Collective, an alliance of conservation agencies dedicated to safeguarding our protected land. The College of the Environment and Life Sciences is proudly part of this collaborative. Peggy's greening of Rhode Island does not end with open space protection. Her work in urban forestry has resulted in planting over 2,000 trees in Providence alone. Peggy, <laughs> Peggy was the first and most influential advocate for waste recycling in Rhode Island. The impressive recycling programs at the Rhode Island Department of Environmental Management and the Rhode Island Solid Waste Management Corporation are the result of Peggy's leadership in the 1980s. 
Peggy Sharp embodies CELL's core mission of science-based natural resource management and protection, and we are proud to honor her with the 2009 CELL's Dean's Award. Congratulations, Peggy, for your exceptional accomplishment. Thank you, Nan. And now I'm pleased to introduce Ray Wright, the Dean of the College of Engineering, to present his Dean's List Awards. Krishnan Subramanian, please join me at the podium. Kabala received his undergraduate degree from Madras University. At 20, he came to URI from India with only $8 in his pocket to pursue a master's degree in electrical engineering. Because meals weren't served at, UR at the URI dining hall on Sundays, he and a friend managed to find apples to eat from a tree on campus. After he graduated, Bala went directly to Texas Instruments, one of the world's largest designers of semiconductors. Following a successful 37-year career, he retired in 2006 as president and chairman of the board of TI Japan, where he was responsible for executive management supervision, regulatory matters, and technological operations. Today, he and his wife, Rama reside in Missouri City, Texas. Together they established the Bala Family Foundation and re <coughs> Family Foundation to provide philanthropic support to higher education and religion and spirituality. Bala is also an active member of the board of Metro Core Bank Shares Incorporated, the holding company for Metro Bank North America and Metro United Bank. Kay Bala, it is my pleasure and honor to present you with this year's Dean's Award and to induct you into the 2009 College of Engineering Hall of Fame. Congratulations, Kay Bala, for your outstanding achievements. Barry Gertz, class of 1976. Barry followed his late father, Junius Babe Gertz, class of 1950, to URI for his engineering degree. He became a sales engineer for Westinghouse Electric before joining Neptune Benson, the family business founded in 1956 by his father and uncle Raymond. In the early years, the firm manufactured swimming pools and filter systems still found in local backyards today. After a fire devastated the facilities in 1978, Barry steered the company to promote and sell filter systems to the commercial recreational water industry. Now located in Coventry, Rhode Island, the company has designed and manufactured for more than 6,000 of the world's largest and most prestigious water parks, aquariums, resorts, and swimming pools. Barry and Sandra Gertz, also class of 1986, live in East Greenwich with two children. They contribute annually to the Gertz Family Engineering Scholarship established by Barry and his father. Barry is also a member of the World Water Park Association Hall of Fame, the International Association of Amusement Parks and Attractions, the American Zoo and Aquarium Association, URI's College of Engineering Advisory Council, and is Vice President of Temple Sinai. Barry, it is my pleasure and honor to present you with this year's Dean's Award and to induct you into the 2009 College of Engineering Hall of Fame. <laughs> Anthony Zuena, class of 1974. Tony has assumed increasing levels of responsibility since joining SEA Consultants in 1981. As a multidisciplinary, full-service engineering, architecture, and planning firm serving energy, higher education, municipalities, state and federal governments, and transportation clients, 
SEA provides creative solutions that balance human and social needs with environmental stewardship. Under his leadership as President and CEO, SEA was voted one of the 50 best places to work by the Boston Business Journal, earned national recognition as a best workplace for commuters, was recently named to the Public Works Magazine top AEC firms, list and ranked among Boston Business Journal's top 10 largest engineering firms. Last month, SEA was also added to the, to the CE News top performers list, which highlights the nation's most successful civil and structural engineering firms. Tony has a deep understanding of regulatory, technical, and financial requirements, and is often asked to present at public meetings the results of his efforts involving water supply and wastewater engineering pro projects. He and Paulette Zuena, also class of 1974, reside in Andover, Mass. Tony, it is my privilege and honor to present you with this year's Dean's Award and to induct you into the 2009 College of Engineering Hall of Fame. Thanks very much, Ray. And, and the final college to present this evening, the Graduate School of Oceanography, please welcome Dean David Farmer to present his awards. Uh, as the relatively young science of oceanography has built up our knowledge about our blue planet, the interdependence of life on land and the oceans that cover more than 70% of the Earth's surface has become increasingly evident. Our three honorees this evening have been on the leading edge in the advance of this knowledge and of how we act upon it through wise policy and administration. Christopher Langdon, please join me by the podium. Christopher received his PhD from the Graduate School of Oceanography in 1988 and is currently on the faculty of the Rosenstiel School of Marine and Atmospheric Science at the University of Miami. He is co-founder of the South Florida Coral Reef and Climate Change Laboratory. Earlier in his career, when he was the director of Biosphere 2 in Arizona, he became interested in the effects of ocean acidification on coral reef formation. Because reef-building corals are exquisitely sensitive to changes in their environment, one might say that Chris's interest has, was captured by one of the ocean's most effective early warning systems for future problems. Truly, corals are to the are oceans as canaries are to the coal mines into which they were carried. Thanks to Chris's deep knowledge of the chemistry and biology of the oceans, he has been uniquely positioned to make significant advances in the study of the biology of corals, especially in relation to climate change. GSO is proud to confer this honor on a deserving scientist whose important research in the area of climate change holds lessons for us all. Congratulations, Christopher, for your impressive accomplishments. Jerry Miller, please join me by the podium. Jerry re received his Master's in Science from the Graduate School of Oceanography in 1982, followed in 1992 by his PhD from the University of Miami. Jerry currently serves as Senior Policy Expert for Ocean Science and Technology at the White House Office of Science and Technology Policy, where he also deals with aspects of meteorology, remote sensing, and climate change. Jerry's work encompasses the formation of policies that have international impact. His office advises a president of the United States on the effect of science and technology on domestic and international affairs, and serves as a source of scientific and technological analysis and judgment for the president with respect to major policies, plans, and programs of a federal government. Jerry co-chairs the National Science and Technology Panel's Joint Subcommittee on Ocean Science and Technology. 
His career speaks to the vital importance of developing high-level governmental policies informed by the kind of direct scientific knowledge that should serve as a basis for decisions that will affect our future as country and as a planet. For his important role in shaping our nation's policies with regard to climate change and related matters, the Graduate School of Oceanography is proud to confer this honor on one of its graduates. Congratulations, Jerry, for your remarkable accomplishments. Thank you, Jason. Michael Sisawan, please join me by the podium. Michael received his PhD from the Graduate School of Oceanography in 1975. In 2001, he received the Presidential Meritorious Rank Award conferred by the President of the United States. Like our other awardees, Mike's career has been built upon first-rate scientific research, <coughs> most of which, in his case, has been conducted in an area of unquestioned importance to the state of Rhode Island, that of our nation's fisheries and fishery management. At present, he is chair of the Advisory Committee of the International Council for Exploration of the Sea, which advises European governmental bodies on marine ecosystems and human impacts upon them. During his career, Mike's talents as an administrator have been a particular focus, as illustrated by the kinds of positions with which he has been entrusted. He has served as Director of Scientific Programs and Chief Science Advisor for the U.S. National Marine Fisheries Service and was responsible for 25 laboratories throughout the USA. During part of his tenure in this role, he led 11 NOAA programs, funded a total of $1 billion annually. For his role in bringing the highest level of scientific knowledge to bear in the administration of a vitally important resource of marine fisheries, the Graduate School of Oceanography is proud to confer this recognition on one of its esteemed alumni. Congratulations, Michael, for your outstanding achievements. Thank you, David. I'm going to turn the podium over to Vice President Bob Beagle. Thank you, uh, Don. Let's uh, all join together in giving all of the recipients one great big round of applause. A, a very, very impressive group of people with terrific experiences and credentials. Uh, I'd like to uh, reintroduce uh, the lively experiment who is uh, going to entertain you uh, with actually a very fitting song for what we've all just heard so far and they're going to be singing hallelujah and isn't that the way we feel after having heard uh, all of these presentations ladies and gentlemen you are eyes the lively experiment
blues away. When kids are suya, alleluia, it's you through the darkest day. Satan lies awaiting and creating skies of red. But alleluia, alleluia, helps you shoo the clouds away. We could have your attention again. Uh, we appreciate. We uh, <laughs> we appreciate your indulgence uh, while. Uh, while our crew rearranged uh, the stage so that we're ready for the, uh, the next part of the program. Uh, as we move on, I want to take this opportunity to uh, thank the university's public affairs and programming department, uh, specifically Paul Witham, Cheryl Trudell, Joanne Esposito and Paula Santos, who really did the work tonight. Uh, and anybody, anybody who's ever been involved with special events know that these things are not easy to put on. And they go through a whole year of planning and a lot of logistical details. So uh, those folks did a, did a tremendous job with this. It, it really is a great opportunity for me tonight to be able to introduce our university president. Uh, you, you met him uh, as he and Lynn Baker Dooley processed. And certainly during the receptions, many of you had an opportunity to talk with him. But at this point, I want to uh, give him a formal introduction and I know that many in the audience uh, have not yet really had an opportunity to learn a whole lot about the president. Uh, Dr. David Dooley uh, came to the University of Rhode Island in July with a distinguished career as a professor, a well-known researcher, and administrator. Most recently, he distinguished himself as the Provost and Vice President for Academic Affairs at Montana State University. President Dooley is known for his collaborative leadership style. He believes in reaching out to others and actively engaging them in such areas as policy development priority setting, and partnerships. His appointment at URI has energized the campus. Students, faculty, and staff were happy when his selection was announced, and they have quickly embraced his style and his philosophies. 
The same thing is true with our external friends and partners. In just a few months, our new president has made himself very well known around the state of Rhode Island. His ideas, combined with his experiences, have made him someone whose leadership Rhode Islanders are excited about. Dave and his wife, Lynn, have two grown children, Samantha and Christopher. And I certainly would be remiss if I didn't also point out that they have a dog named Rhodey. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is with great pride that I present to you the 11th President of the University of Rhode Island, Dr. David M. Dooley. Thank you very, very much. It's a true pleasure to be here tonight. The first time that Lynn and I have had an opportunity to participate in and enjoy the, the Distinguished Achievement Awards. I'll have some more to say about how special this night is to us a little bit later. First, what I'd like to do is, is ask David, but he's already anticipated my request <laughs> and stands ready to assist in the awards that I'm a, it's my honor to present the President's Distinguished Achievement Awards. I'd like to invite them to the podium, beginning with Pat Anton of the class of 1979. James Diller of the class of 1957. <laughs> Richard Kerr of the class of 1977. Edward M. Rudnick of the classes of 1978, 1982, and 1983. It's a, it's a humbling experience uh, to stand before you tonight and understand the nature and impact of the contributions that the individuals we have honored tonight have made to Rhode Island, to the nation, to the world, and to humanity. Tonight we are indeed proud and privileged to honor individuals who completely personify our traditions of excellence and professional achievement, leadership, and community service. This is our fourth year of the Distinguished Achievement Awards, and we once again see how our alumni and friends are making a real difference in their communities, both within the state, across the nation, and across the globe. This year's University of Rhode Island's President's Distinguished Achievement Awards are truly an inspirational group. They include individuals who have revolutionized entire segments of commerce and industry in the United States, individuals who have created products, whether they're products that help the health of genuinely millions of people in our nation and across the world, or products that have fueled a technology explosion 
in computers and information technology over the past decades. Clearly, these are individuals who've had a substantial impact, and that impact is in part understood by the writing of one another, of another of our distinguished recipients tonight, who is one of the most recognized and acclaimed journalists writing about science uh, in the world. These talented and innovative individuals are all leaders. We salute all of them for their innumerable contributions to us, to our society, and to our future. As part of my duty tonight, it's a privilege for me to read a special citation provided by Congressman Patrick Kennedy in honor of these individuals and indeed all of our awardees tonight. I would like to read the citation to all of you. Be it known that Congressman Patrick J. Kennedy hereby offers his sincerest congratulations to each of the recipients in recognition of receiving the 2009 President's Award from the University of Rhode Island. Congressman Kennedy extends his very best wishes on this memorable occasion and expresses the hope for their continued good fortune. Given the 17th day of October 2009 at the United States Capitol in Washington, D.C., and signed Patrick J. Kennedy, United States Congressman. Congratulations to all of you. Pat Anton uh, has had a remarkable career, by all accounts. It may seem a stretch to go from majoring in music education to revolutionizing the airport food and beverage industry, but that's exactly what she accomplished. While at URI, as a music education major, she participated in the choir and the RAM band, and it was revealed to me earlier tonight <coughs> got her start in the food and beverage in industry by washing dishes <laughs> at the University of Rhode Island. As former president and CEO of Anton Airfoot Incorporated, a company she co-founded with her husband, William Conrad Anton, in 1989, Pat will tell you that the time management and organizational skills that she acquired while mastering the flute, singing in the choir, playing in the band, and writing musical scores are the same kinds of skills that it takes to create a successful and innovative business that comes to dominate large segments of an industry. Anton Air Food began as a small company offering food and beverage concessions at Washington National Airport and grew into one of the premier airport food and beverage operators in the industry, carving out a market niche in the airport world while raising industry standards across the board. As part of her contributions, Pat herself, of course, was a pioneer in the advancement of women in an important segment of American commerce and was, and was a champion for all women in the food service industry and chaired the, the Women's Food Service Forum, a very influential and notable group where she had a lasting impact that can be measured even today. Today, Pat and her husband oversee their own private charitable foundation which focuses on cultural and historical preservation, land and water conservation, the decorative, fine, and performing arts, and education. It is my honor to introduce Pat Ander Anton of Henderson, Nevada, of the class of 1979. We'll have an opportunity now to see a video which shares further testimony to her remarkable achievements. My education and my training in music and in the arts really did prepare me for eventually what would become my, my life's work. We founded Anton Air Food in 1989. Um, our first location was at Reagan National Airport and by the time we sold the company 15 years later we were in uh, about 20 airports across the country. Uh, we had over 2,000 employees, and through the years, we were recognized as the best food and beverage operator uh, in the world. When I look back at my education at the University of Rhode Island, uh, 
I look back and I think about all the components that makes one successful in business. In the arts world, there is a striving for excellence every day in everything that you do. I have a lot of friends that tease me and say, this girl from West Warwick, Rhode Island is living the American dream, and I am. I am so fortunate, I am so blessed. But unless we had kept our eyes open along the way and looked for opportunity and looked for new ways of doing things and seized the opportunity and put ourselves in a position to be successful, then we would not be where we are today. I had dreams when I was younger. I never said them out loud, and I never truly believed that they could come true. So my advice would be dream, allow yourself to dream, and dream big. Pat, would you please join me at the podium? It's my honor to present to you these tokens of our admiration for all that you have done and accomplished. Congratulations. Thank you, President Dooley. Um, I'd also like to thank Dean Brownell for her support. And um, most importantly, I'd like to thank my family for being here with me this evening. Um, but even more importantly, for being so supportive and loving and unconditionally um, forgiving throughout the years. Um, I am very excited that the University of Rhode Island has chosen to celebrate very diverse individuals and various pathways to career success. And if you look at the individuals that are sharing the stage with me here this evening, um, they have chosen paths in pharmacy, in science, scientific journalism, um, in semiconductors, um, and on my part, beer and hot dogs. Um, <laughs> so it's, um, but it's kind of easy to make, make light of my own chosen profession, but I do believe it's imperative that the students um, here at the University of Rhode Island, Rhode Island and all students across the country and, and especially hopefully those that are still here this evening, the student volunteers, uh, do understand that there are many, many different pathways to personal and professional success. It's a circuitous route along the way, but stick in there. It's, uh, it's really worth every moment of your hard work and efforts. And if there's one thing you do, do need to remember every single day is that the American dream is in, within your reach. So thank you to the faculty, thank you to the staff, thank you to the students, thank you to, to the supporters, the families, and the friends of the University of Rhode Island. Um, this award does mean a lot to me. God bless you. God bless America. Well, as a student at the University of Rhode Island, Jim Della rolled up his sleeves and also washed dishes at Memorial Union and serving meals and served meals at his fraternity, Phi Gamma Delta. I'm, there might be a theme here to great achievement. <laughs> it's been a long time since he's been up to his elbows in soapy water, however. In a career that has spanned more than four decades, this soft-spoken serial entrepreneur has set the cornerstone for many successes in the semiconductor industry for many years. He is known simultaneously as an innovator and a leader. And that's a very hard thing to do, to, be, to succeed at both of those things. Generally speaking, those who innovate are not those who can lead adequately, and those who can lead are frequently not those who innovate. But James did both, and did both for many years, and in a way that transformed an industry that has indeed transformed the world. A graduate 
of our physics department, he founded Sierra Semiconductor in 1984, which initially produced chips for the computing industry. As the internet itself, however, exploded, the networking businesses grew dramatically and became the focus of the company, which changed its name to PMC Sierra, the name of the division which was producing products and services for the internet world. After retiring, but briefly, <laughs> in 1997, he joined Atlantic Semiconductor as CEO and helped turn that company around. In 2000, he retired again, although he remains active in a number of capacities. Today, the Portola Valley, California resident and his longtime Rhode Island <laughs> sweetheart, June, have been involved in philanthropy on both coasts. At URI, they established one of the largest endowed scholarships for students majoring in science. Through that scholarship, they will have an impact on generations and generations of students at the University of Rhode Island, who themselves, I'm sure, will help transform our world. It is with gratitude that I introduce to you James Diller, Portola Valley, California, of the class of 1957. I was a member of a fraternity brother at the Pi Gamma Delta, which is a great house. And so all of the social aspects of it, the fraternity aspects of it, and the academic. It was a, it was a wonderful four years. In 1957, when I was about to graduate from uh, University of Rhode Island, it was obviously a very exciting time. I was about to become engaged to my high school girlfriend, and I had made the decision to go on to graduate school. Before the end of the first year, I realized that physics research was probably not something I wanted to do. And so I was looking around to see what was available and I decided to leave school and go into industry. One company I interviewed, which was called Transitron Electronics, was in the semiconductor business. And I knew enough at the time to realize that that was, had the potential to be a very, very strong industry, although it was in its infancy. So between 1968 and 1975, we lived five years out of the country. We lived in Hong Kong, we lived in Munich, and we lived in Singapore, and it was really a great experience. The kids, uh, our youngest son started first grade in, in Hong Kong. He did second, third grade in Munich, uh, fourth and fifth in, the, in California, and sixth and seventh back in Singapore. But in the back of my mind, I had always had the goal to run my own company, and I left National with three other individuals who were very, very strong engineering people, and we started a company. We started a company called Sierra Semiconductor, and we got our first venture capital funding in 1984, January, as I recall. From a career point of view, it's very clear. Find work that you absolutely love. And if you love it, uh, then go work very hard at it. And how you'll know that is if, uh, and it's the way I felt for years, every morning when you get up, if you cannot wait to get the job, then you know you're in the right job. Jim, for your enormous distinction, as a graduate of the University of Rhode Island for your many contributions to revolutionizing a truly revolutionary industry, for your entrepreneurial spirit and all that it means, we are honored to honor you tonight. Congratulations. I can take that while you speak. Well, I guess first thing I'd like to do is thank the president and all of the staff here at the university. This is a very uh, significant honor for me. Uh, it was a great time here, although it's been 52 years, so I probably don't remember all of it, but, <laughs> but I can assure you that I have very, very fond memories. You saw that picture of the Phi Gam house, and I don't know who those two people were, but, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I know who she was, but uh, I'm not sure about the rest of it. Anyway, I think uh, I'm very honored. It was a tremendous experience. I have very, very fond memories of URI, and it was a great launch to my career. And uh, you know, I, I really thank the university. And he's right. I did wash dishes along with Pat, although many years earlier in the student union. And again, thanks very much. And the only other thing I would add is that, that advice, and I really believe that. Find something you really, really love and just go do it and it'll work out great. Thank you very much. While working on a doctorate in chemical oceanography, Dick Kerr took some journalism classes. He thought, without the knowledge of his major advisor for his PhD work. But he recently learned that in fact his advisor knew all along. And I like to think that that was an indication that the advisor saw something in Dick which maybe Dick himself hadn't quite yet realized was there and encouraged him, I think, to do as Jim had suggested, which is pursue something that he loved. I'm told that it was to his own surprise, and, and I would be surprised too, reading the title of this article, that Dick sold or his first article that he wrote, which was entitled, The Best Grape Nut Pudding in Southern New England, <laughs> <laughs> to the Providence Sunday Journal magazine. That success apparently convinced him that he could combine science and journalism as a career. And, and that's a combination that required Dick to really complete that PhD and gain that essential credential in science that I think is so necessary to understand the workings of the fields. Today, he is one of the most read science journalists in the country. I have to confess, I've read an inordinate number of his articles over the years without ever realizing that he was an alumnus of the University of Rhode Island. I knew him only as one of the more interesting writers in Science Magazine. As a senior news writer for Science Magazine for more than three decades, Dick has reported on such stories as dinosaur extinction, ozone depletion, and climate change, ably explaining the significance of complex phenomena and multi-leveled scientific investigations of these phenomena. In fact, today, with the rapid explosion of scientific and technological knowledge across the world, and it's important to the grand challenges that all of us face collectively as a people in the 21st century. Dick's talents are probably even more needed to inform public policy and to inform democracy. It's a great pleasure to introduce to you this prize-winning journalist, Dick Kerr of Bethesda, Maryland, the class of 1977, and share with you this video. In science writing, you get to hit all the different parts of oceanography and all the parts of, say, earth science or planetary science. A real plus to the whole experience was being down at the Bay Campus, good facilities, and you know, just to immerse you in a wonderful uh, environment. The high point was surveying restaurants in southern Rhode Island for their grape nut pudding. <laughs> I think the biggest moment, or actually it was stretched over some years in the 1980s, was covering uh, one story, and that was the story about what killed the dinosaurs. It was memorable for me because, well, it's a, a big, exciting, uh, provocative story. It really drew on much of uh, my experience at URI. A week after defending my dissertation at URI, 
I was at science. I got the best job I ever could have right out of your eye, and I couldn't be more appreciative. Dick, would you join me at the podium, please? In recognition of your outstanding achievements to advancing the public's understanding of science and technology and its impact on the modern world, we're very pleased to honor you tonight in the best way that we possibly can. Congratulations. Thank you, Dave, uh, and thank you, URI and the Graduate School of Oceanography. Uh, I did have some preparation uh, well before uh, I arrived at URI in 1972, so there's some people I'd like to thank, starting with my parents, who helped me build that telescope when I was 14. Uh, then there was uh, Mr. Deal, my fifth grade teacher, who showed me how to crush tin cans with nothing but atmospheric pressure. Uh, then um, I guess there was uh, my college chemistry professor who introduced me to uh, independent research. Leroy Haynes at the College of Worcester. Uh, with a stint in the Navy, which taught me about how to spill oil in the ocean. Um, <laughs> ironically enough, I, I then went on to URI where, and, and worked in a laboratory where they mostly worked on oil pollution. Uh, but at URI, um, I'd like to thank the entire faculty and staff at the Graduate School of Oceanography. The dean at the time, I would like to thank especially, that was John Knaus, who uh, is still living up in Saunderstown. And in particular, I'd like to thank Jim Quinn, uh, He's a professor emeritus now, Graduate School of Oceanography. He was my advisor. He was the one I thought I was fooling. Um, so I'd like to thank him for his patience and forbearance uh, as I considered a probably uh, radical idea for an alternative career at the time. But Jim uh, also devoted meticulous attention to me as a student, as, as someone learning the ways of science. He also devoted himself to expeditiously moving the students through the graduate school and uh, for that I'm particularly grateful and that he got me finished up in time to take, as I said, the, uh, the best job I could ever have. So I thank them all and thank you all very much. While earning three pharmacy degrees at the University of Rhode Island, Ed Rugnick developed an interest in some of the fundamental phenomena behind the use of drugs in the treatment of disease, namely the kinetics and the mechanisms associated with release, both sustained release and continuous release uh, of oral drugs and drug delivery systems and the impacts that, that had for the appropriate regimens of treatment. I guess he must have developed a simultaneous interest 
and a classmate, Beth Gorman, because he took the three degrees and Beth with him when he left. <laughs> His pharmaceutical interests that he developed at URI led into a truly outstanding and innovative career. As the founder, former chairman, and CEO of Middlebrook Pharmaceuticals, he has more than 25 years experience in the development and commercialization of a wide range of pharmaceutical products. The products he invented or co-invented and commercialized have enjoyed more than $8 billion in cumulative sales. He is a lead inventor or co-inventor on more than 80 United States and international patents. The compounds that he invented or co-invented have made the difference in millions of lives. He remains deeply connected to the University of Rhode Island. He and Beth are major benefactors to the College of Pharmacy, and he serves on the foundation board for the URI's research division. He maintains another URI legacy that's also important. His oldest daughter, Betsy, graduated from URI in 2006 and continues the tradition of outstanding participations, participation excuse me, in the University of Rhode Island from the family. It's an honor to introduce to you Edward M. Rugnick from Potomac, Maryland, the classes of 1978, 1982, and 1983, and share with you this video. that I was in at Rhode Island was fantastic about teaching you how to solve problems, how to think out of the box, if you will, and to get things accomplished. My fondest moment at URI uh, was uh, my third year in graduate school. And I remember uh, Dr. Rhodes asking me one time to come into the conference room uh, for a meeting and uh, seeing this uh, uh, lovely young lady sitting there and uh, we started chatting and uh, we talked over some of the issues and I couldn't tell you what some of the issues were but I remember the chat like it was yesterday and uh, over time uh, we ended up seeing uh, more and more of each other and uh, ultimately got married and uh, one of our daughters is a, a successful URI alum. To this day uh, Dr. Rhodes takes credit for uh, my personal success as well as my professional success as he should. <laughs> Uh, but it became obvious to me that large pharmaceutical companies were no longer going to work uh, for me. I can attribute all of that to the kind of uh, creative thinking, uh, training, and education I got at URI. If I had any advice to uh, people coming out of school at URI or other schools uh, in the medical field, uh, I would say focus on value creation and uh, economic benefit to society and the healthcare system. Those are the products that will be rewarded. Those will be the products that will be utilized and adapted. I'm Ed Rudnick, and thanks to URI, I'm thinking big. Come join us. Ed, would you join me at the podium, please? Ed, for your innovative spirit, for your dedication and devotion to making a difference in the lives of millions, for your application of the scientific methods and what they can do for people, we are pleased to honor you tonight and present to you the Distinguished Achievement Award. Thank you. Thank you all tonight. Uh, thank you, Dr. Dooley. I'd like to thank Dr. Carruthers, uh, Dean Jordan, uh, for all your support on uh, this award. Um, I'd like to thank Dr. Rhodes, Dr. Lozier, Dr. Osborne, uh, for all their help as I've made my journey uh, intellectually through this field. And uh, <clears throat> my wife, Beth, um, 
pharmacy class of 83, the best pharmacist they ever put out. <laughs> Much better than me, by the way. <laughs> and uh, to the URI community, um, whatever we can do to help, we're there. Thank you. Lynn and I have enjoyed an, an extraordinarily warm welcome from Rhode Island, from the University of Rhode Island community after making the move here. And we're deeply, deeply grateful for that welcome. I want to share with you tonight that we're very, very much aware of the extremely high quality of life that Rhode Island offers, the beauty of the ocean state, and the wonderful amenities that the countryside and the cities and towns of Rhode Island provide. And we were very, very appreciative and admired the success of the University of Rhode Island and believed strongly that it had a great future in front of it. But none of those are the main reason we came. The main reason that we came here you have seen tonight. It is the people of the University of Rhode Island and of the state that are its greatest assets and its greatest appeal to those of us who look at the state from outside and wonder if we can indeed become a part of it and a part of the community that exists here. And you have seen why and how tonight those people make such an extraordinary difference in the lives of so many people. And it is, as I said at the outset, a very humbling experience for both of us, I believe, certainly for me, to participate in this evening. And I want to thank all the award winners, the presidential winners, and all the dean's winners for all that you have done to transform the world that we once knew into a world that is indeed a better one. And we ask all of you to continue that very, very important work and to enlist others to assist you. And we want the University of Rhode Island to be the kind of university that continues to prepare young people for the kinds of success that we have celebrated tonight. The word testimony is not a word that's used very frequently anymore outside of certain religious circles. But I believe it's a critical word and a very important word for us to ponder tonight. For as the testimonies of the lives of our students, the testimonies of all of their accomplishments, the testimonies that they can share as they fulfill their hopes and dreams that are in fact the most profound and lasting legacy of an institution like the University of Rhode Island. Those testimonies we have heard eloquently tonight. And we have paused as we do too, in, too, too infrequently to listen to those testimonies and to celebrate what they mean for all of us. The contributions that they have made have been numerous and many. But one important outcome of all the work that they have done is that they have been making a difference. And as many of you know, you or I has set out to make a difference in the world. And we're succeeding. It's a pleasure for me tonight to announce to this audience a piece of news that will become public after midnight, but I wanted to share it with you first. That the University of Rhode Island has met the critical benchmark of raising $100 million in its Making a Difference campaign. And that is something we can all celebrate. It's been a pleasure to be with you tonight. The night is drawing to a close. I thank you all for your participation, for your support, and, I'd, and I want to share with you my deep admiration for each and every one who's here tonight, for all that they have done, and those who've supported them. Thank you very much, and Bob, I invite you to come to the podium and conclude our evening.
<clears throat> Thank you, President Dooley, for your moving comments and the moving tributes that we've had and the comments from our presidential award winners, concluding what I think has been a very moving and impressive evening. Uh, throughout the night, you've seen uh, signage and uh, you've heard uh, references from our award winners who have said that they're thinking big or they're doing big, and uh, you see that uh, everywhere around the hall. And uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, and geez, I hope there isn't anybody who doesn't know, <laughs> but for those who don't know, the university's branding theme for the past year has been Think Big, We Do. And as part of that theme, we have consistently emphasized that one of the distinguishing features that makes the University of Rhode Island a big thinking institution doing big things in Rhode Island, around the country, and around the world, what really distinguishes us is our alumni. And there's no more manifestation of that than all the people here tonight that we have honored. So one more round of applause for everyone who's been honored tonight. I also again want to thank the University of Rhode Island Alumni Association of all of, all of our other sponsors without whom this would not have been possible. And again, thanks to all of our friends and guests who have been here tonight, and I know there are a lot of families here of the distinguished award winners, and we are delighted to have you because we consider you a part of the university's family as well. So thanks again. Good night, everyone, and have a safe trip home, and let's hope it doesn't rain.